Welcome everybody to part three of our Africa safari. So this is a great impala hunt. Kayla was behind the gun, I was running the camera, and it was just a great way to end our final days of hunting. So uh, in our last video, we transitioned from the first lodge that we were at to the final lodge, and this was a great place. I mean, just yeah, super so cool. Yeah, so compared to the Kalahari, so this is not the desert. This is rolling hills, open, grassy areas. And so I really enjoyed this a lot because we can just see all the animals just mm -hmm. running across. We can see how they interact with each other um, because in the Kalahari it's more bushy um, and you can't see very far in front of you. But out here we can just, it's just amazing watching them run out. It's kind of like the Lion King. Yeah, <laughs> it really was super cool. So the, uh, the lodging, the food, the care that these folks took, uh, just making everything perfect for us was beyond anything I've ever experienced. And so uh, this is gonna be a little bit longer section of our video. Um, and some of you might not be interested, so feel free to just fast forward. But for those of you who might be interested in coming here to hunt and going with Ari on a, a trip, we wanna just show you some of the lodging and some of the area where we stayed. Um, without us talking any more about it, we wanted to show you this video and uh, just have you take a look at this awesome area. On the start of this Impala hunt, we had a little bit of trouble uh, actually getting close to one. We saw a ton of game. I mean, there was more animals than I even knew existed in <laughs> Africa. I mean, just running everywhere. Uh, it was almost like a, like a zoo. It was crazy. There were so mm -hmm. many animals. And so we were having fun just looking at everything. And then finally we spot an Impala that's in some tall brush. And I was getting a little bit excited. I was getting the camera ready. and. Uh, Ari said pretty quickly, no, this isn't the one. So he, yeah, we got to be disappointed quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> he, I, he was hollering at him and whistling at him. And finally, this, this little youngster raised his head up and we could tell that he was not the trophy we were looking for. So we passed him and, and went on. And I guess it was about dark when we saw the, the final group of Impala there. And they were all mixed in together, uh, some springbok and females. And the big male, he just knew. He just knew that he was he was the trophy, and so he yeah. stayed behind the brush, tucked away from Kayla. We were perfect, ready. She was on the the sandbag, just ready for a shot, and he just would not come out. Here he comes. He's coming. Stopped. A few more steps. Um, I can't. There's two with horns. Yeah, you, that's that's the springbok. Okay. He's to the left of that springbok, about to walk in. You see the springbok looking at us, eh? Mm, they're in the bush. Yeah. That's a springbok, I see one looking at him. Yeah. I think Paula's going to the left again. That closed off our fourth day of hunting. And we ha only had basically, I guess, a half day left of, of hunting to get it done.
Yeah, because we were going to spend the day before we left. Um, we were going to spend the day in Johannesburg. Yeah. So we kicked off our last day, and pretty quickly Ari put us on a really nice Impala. Mm -hmm. And this Impala was not in a hurry, but he knew just oh. how to skirt around us. And, <laughs> yes, he did. I mean, I had footage of him uh, just walking away, just slowly, calmly. But he knew that he wasn't giving us a shot, and then he would slip off in the brush and cut into another section. Yeah, he would either face away, or whenever he was broadside, he was behind something. Hold on. mouse game for 20 minutes I would say. It was a long time. We were following in the truck. Uh, we knew that he was moving too quick for us to catch up spot and stalk so finally we uh, we come around the corner and here comes our Impala and he's just stepping into the brush and I thought it's over. I was on the back of the truck with the gun on the sandbag in the back of the truck and it was one of those things where it was like I'm not going to get a shot at this animal. It's the last day of the hunt it was, there's a lot of adrenaline. <laughs> yes, there was. So uh, because of the, the stress of our last day, the pressure on with it going into the brush, uh, Kayla had proved herself with her shooting <laughs> during the hunt. And Ari said, if you've got the shot in the brush, take it. And I was just zooming in. Nobody gave me any warning. <laughs> but hey, Ari said take the shot. Ari said take the shot. So uh, we didn't get excellent footage, but we still got the, the hit on, on there. And man, this was a great Impala and just uh, turned out to be an excellent trophy. You see him through the bush, yes. the shoulder? Yes. Okay, wait, wait. Just keep an eye. See if he's coming through the, on the spot. See the shoulder stop pop? Can you see him? Yes. If you can take the shoulder, you can take him. Perfect, let's get off. Perfect shot. Thank you. Then it was a difficult shot. Yeah. I'm glad you take it. <laughs> <laughs> Through the brush. It's, yeah. There was that open space I could see it and I, I hope you saw it as well. Uh -huh. And you yeah, you figured out exactly where to put it as well. I think you hit it right here in the front through the shoulders and on the spine and you dropped it right there. Beautiful one. <laughs> you happy? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool because I've gotten to shoot off the sticks and the truck. Yeah. <laughs> you said you didn't you didn't want to give him another chance to walk away. Yeah. It's gonna take him now through the brush. Mm-hmm. Take it like a real South African. <laughs> <laughs> like a real Texan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I felt really proud to shoot it from the back of the truck because we were moving so quickly and it he was walking and we were <laughs> driving around and so it was very fast. Um, and so that was really exciting. It was probably the farthest shot that I took the whole trip. Um, and it was just, it was really cool and a lot of fun.
So the great thing about these trips is that uh, there's plenty of options of things to do if you get your animals early or you want to just see what you can see in the city. There's plenty of fun things and so what we chose to do was go to an elephant sanctuary and also um, an interactive zoo. So tell them a little bit about that because I know you enjoyed that <laughs> a lot. So the zoo was really cool and we got to see a lot of different animals. Some of the animals that you see behind us were there um, and we got to see how they interact. Our guide had, what was it, chicken legs? Chicken legs, Our yeah. guy had chicken legs in a bucket and threw them out to the lions and were they, they were tigers, right? Tigers and wild dogs. Yeah, and the wild dogs, which was just insane. Um, it was so cool. And then they, the guide actually had raised, what was it called, a serval or a caracal? Caracal. So the guide had actually raised this caracal that was at the zoo. So I got to pet it and it sleeps in her bed and, yeah, really and, cool. and lives with her. And then it stays at the zoo during the day. So that was so cool. And then we got to go into this part with lemurs and the lemurs are jumping around. That was and my favorite. <laughs> you have a bowl of what just grapes, grapes. And, they, and they jump on you and they just totally cover you. I had one smacking in my face. Um, that was really, really fun. And then we also got to play with lion cubs, which was really cool and something mm. that you, it's starting to not be legal in the States. Um, so that was really cool that we got to check that off of our bucket list and play with those lion cubs. Yeah, just to get to play with the lion cubs was awesome. And I think the lemurs was one of the highlights of oh, the trip. They were us. so funny. I don't think I've laughed that much <laughs> ever in my life. Yeah. I got that on camera. <laughs> I couldn't even hold my camera and oh my keep gosh. the lemurs away and everything. It was it was insane. They were but, rude. <laughs> yeah, but there's a ton of fun things to do. There's spas. There's mm -hmm. uh, the zoos. There's anything you could find in a in a town somewhere. I mean, it's it's a great place to go and yeah. sightsee. And and Ari and Yolandi are very knowledgeable about. I mean, they're locals, so they know where to go, the fun things to do, the places to eat, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, with the elephant sanctuary, we got to actually learn about them and then we got to interact with them we got to you know touch them and feel their hair we got to feed them we got to hold on to their tusks and take pictures and mm -hmm. touch their tails and all that kind of stuff so that was really really cool too yeah so after we had spent a day sightseeing uh it came to the close of our trip and this was a very uh tough time for us because with COVID regulations and the uncertainty in our world, uh, it, was, it was not certain that we would ever come back to South Africa. And the thought of not seeing Ari and Yolandi ever again, it broke our hearts. And the, the airport was a, a very tearful goodbye. <laughs> and uh, I'm tearing up now just thinking about it. But uh, their friends, they're family, um, but they they treat us like um, like whenever we're here, we're the, we're the most important people in the world. We're mm -hmm. treated like kings and queens, and we love their, their kids and uh, enjoy being a part of their lives through video calls <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. But uh, every minute that we're not in South Africa, we, we want to go back. And I th every day I wake up and I think, oh, when are we going back to South Africa? And um, it's, it's just something that you can't describe to anyone without them com coming to South Africa to experience it. And so um, more than just a hunting guide, Ari is a, a man of honor and 
he treats his clients well and treats them like family. And so uh, we want to share this experience with all of our hunting clients and we want you to come here because it's something that's changed our lives and it's something that has been the most special experience for us. Yeah, I was telling Jason um, when we got here, it's hard to commit. It's hard to commit to being so far from home. I Googled it, we're almost 9,000 miles away from home. <laughs> um, it's a 15 hour flight um, and it's very hard and I, I dread getting on that airplane, but I told him that the second we get here and get through customs, <laughs> you know, it's totally worth it. You know, we, Ari Yolandi and Ari Jr. were at the airport waiting on us and it just felt like we came back to our second home. And so it's, it's a tough decision to make, especially if you have to take off work and it's, it's a rough <laughs> 15 hour flight, but it is so worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you have any questions about booking, if you want to learn more about it, you can always reach us uh, at TeamSwampStompLLC.com. You can find us on Facebook, Team Swamp Stomp LLC, Instagram. Uh, my phone number, my personal cell is 903-330-1947. I'm happy to answer any questions about these Africa hunts. Uh, we, we take pride in being Ari's U.S. representatives to, to help book flights, book hunts, help with hunt packages, all that kind of thing. So reach out to us. We want to share this with you. It, the trip of a lifetime is not even a, a, <laughs> an adequate uh, description. But uh, thank you guys for watching this, for sharing our hunts with us in South Africa. We'll see you again soon.